All right, so the other night while having dinner, my six-year-old turns to me and asks, Daddy, would you rather have a meatball that goes on forever or a noodle that goes on forever? Which, through the lens of Newtonian physics, is actually an interesting question. I mean, the meatball would eventually get so big that it would turn into a black hole and we'd all get sucked in and die. But the noodle? That's the weird one. If a noodle went on forever, it would have infinite mass. But even still, it would barely pull on you at all. You see, what we're really going to do today is derive the gravitational attraction between a point mass and a long, thin rod. And I'm going to show you that even if this noodle or, or rod was infinitely long, and therefore infinitely massive, it will only ever produce a finite gravitational force on our little point mass over here. And that force from a noodle is actually pretty small. Albeit, I bet you're probably not watching this video to find out about the gravitational force from a spaghetti noodle. Anyhow, anytime we're talking about the gravitational force between two objects, we need to turn to Newton's law of universal gravitation which tells us how much gravitational force exists between two masses as a function of how far apart those two masses have been set. The issue is when dealing with this point mass and this rod. The point mass has an absolute position. The issue is the rod is really a distribution of mass. It's actually lots of different masses at lots of different positions. So we can't just say the distance between the point mass and the rod is some single radius. What that means is we're going to have to deal with a bit of calculus to solve for the gravitational force between these two objects. Now to do that, what we're going to do is look at this rod as though it's actually an infinite number of little slices of rod. And the first thing we're going to do is look at the mass of one little slice of this rod. Now what we're going to do is say that this rod has a certain mass, and, and again, if this rod goes on forever, that mass is going to be infinite. But a single slice of the rod isn't going to have infinite mass. We're going to say it has some tiny little amount of mass. I'm going to call that dm. It's an infinitely small chunk or slice of the total mass of the rod. And that mass is actually going to be a function of really how, how dense this rod is, or really how much mass it has per unit length. We're going to show that using the Greek letter lambda. And that's going to represent the mass per unit length of our rod. That's something you'd measure in kilograms per meter. Now, our little slice right here is some distance r away from this particle. And the slice actually has a length. So if we can multiply the mass per unit length times the length of this slice, that'll give us the total mass. Now, the length of this slice is an infinitely small change in r. So I'm going to call that dr. That is to say, our little slice is infinitely thin. It doesn't have a thickness of zero. It has some thickness. It's just infinitely small. And so what we're going to do here now is take this mass and look at how much gravitational force there is between just this little slice right here and our particle over here using this equation for gravity. So the force by a slice is going to be, going back to our equation, I'm going to call this dfg, it's not the total force by gravity, it's an infinitely small piece or portion of the total force by gravity. And that's going to be equal to g times the mass of our point mass over here. I'm going to call that mp, for p for point mass, multiplied by dm, the mass of our slice. That's going to be divided by r, the distance between our point mass and our slice. And that's squared. So subbing this term in right here, we get this expression. And realize, everything over here is g, m, p, lambda. Those are just constants. Those are never going to change as we move along this rod. So now that we know the force by a single slice on this rod, all we're going to do is take a look at the force by each of these little slices along the entire rod added up. And to do that, our total force by gravity is just going to be the infinite sum of all of these little gravitational forces from an individual slice. So, subbing this equation in up here, we're going to have the infinite sum of this expression. And we're going to be looking at all the slices from some initial distance between a particle and our rod. I'm going to call that Ri. And some final distance way over here, I'm going to call that 
our f, and we can let that be whatever we want. In the case of our infinite noodle, we'll let this approach an infinite value. Now again, remember, these are all constants, so we can just pull those out. And that leaves us with this function, which we can apply to this situation in order to find the force by gravity between these two objects. Now, getting back to our noodle. Let's plug in some numbers and I'll show you that even though this rod goes on forever, and therefore is going to be infinitely massive, there's only going to be a finite force between the person and the noodle. And that force is actually impressively small. You see our force by gravity plugging in numbers, it's going to be equal to g, the gravitational constant, multiplied by the mass of the person. So let's say this person has a mass of, how about, 75 kilograms, multiplied by the mass per unit length of our rod, or in our case, a uh, spaghetti noodle. And yes, folks, I actually went and got out a noodle and weighed it. And I found that the mass per unit length of a spaghetti noodle is 0.004 kilograms per meter. And I promise you, this is the only place on YouTube that numbers come up. Now let's say our noodle starts, uh, how about one meter away from the person, just to keep the numbers simple here. So we're gonna have one over the initial distance, that's one, minus one over the final distance, or the end point of this rod, which is actually an infinite distance away. Now, yes, I understand this is actually a limit that we're approaching. Look at what the math does here. You see, 1 over an infinite value is, in fact, 0. And so we'll find the force by gravity between our person and our infinitely long, infinitely massive noodle works out to be 2 times 10 to the minus 11th newtons. And I understand this number can be a bit counterintuitive. I mean, if we have a mass that goes on forever and ever, that mass is going to be infinite. So according to our equation, we should have an infinite numerator here. But the catch is, if this rod goes on forever and ever and ever, it's also going to have an infinite denominator, an infinite distance. And because this term down here in the denominator is our squared, ultimately what happens is the, the force by gravity is going to fall off. Or really, you could say this limit is convergent. And as a result, we get a finite value for the force between this infinitely long rod and this particle. And if you want to see the math behind just how large a meatball would have to be in order to turn into a black hole, I'll post that up here as well. Uh, but I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.